Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Dev Diary. This week, things are going to be getting a little bit technical as we're discussing the changes coming to combat, individual units, combat width, division templates, and all that other stuff coming in the Barbarossa update. If you're feeling overwhelmed by these types of changes, don't worry, you're in the exact same boat as me and everyone else. So hop along for the ride, feel free to hit subscribe, and let's get into this week's Dev Diary. So, the dev diary begins by talking about high command bonus changes. So, previously it was thought that high command bonuses applied to the individual battalions that make up the entire division template. It does in fact not work like this currently, and was more so based on a majority type. That meaning, whatever the majority of a template was comprised of would therefore determine what the division was, and therefore would get the bonus applied based on that. Moving forward though, High Command will now work on a composition basis, meaning depending on what percentage of your division template is based on, let's say, artillery or infantry, will determine the percentage of the bonus you will receive. The example is given of a division which has two artillery and three infantry battalions. In this case, two artillery would make 40% artillery, and three infantry will make 60% infantry. It is therefore from my understanding that in the example of Guy Simmons, shown here, that 40% of his attack and defence bonus that he gives is going to be applied, and 60% is going to be discarded because only 40% of the division template is artillery. I think overall this equates to it being a nerf to high command, because you can't just overstack on different divisions to get a majority type and then overlay them for the bonus you only get the percentage of the composition of a division template, but at least it's slightly more logical than what it was before. On top of this though, battalions, which previously could have multiple different tags, only have a single tag that they can be applied for to receive a bonus, those being cavalry or armour or artillery or motorised, mechanised or infantry, which coincidentally falls in that order of priority. What's interesting about this new priority basis for individual battalions is the order, because the most prioritised battalion type is cavalry. So I wonder, does that mean that if you have a, let's say, five battalions of cavalry and five battalions of tanks, armour, that it's going to recognise that division as being a cavalry division, primarily? Um, <laughs> perhaps. I'm just, I'm just interested to learn why they chose this specific order of priority, sticking horses of all things as the number one. Regardless, that's not all of it, because there are some overlaps. These are rockets and special forces, which act both in some cases as infantry and artillery, depending on what you've picked. I think the long and short of this means that if you've got a military high command for infantry, and you've got a military high command for special forces, your Mountaineer Divisions will be one of the few divisions in the game that will get the bonuses of both Infantry and Special Forces. So hopefully, that works out as more powerful Special Forces and more justification to use Rocket Artillery. Composition takes a step further though, because it's also based upon the actual equipment to which each template uh, division is holding. So if you've got a primarily tank-based division template, however you haven't stocked any tanks and it only has the motorised left in it, for example, the tanks will not be worth as much and it might actually flip the division to being a motorised because there are no tanks in your tank division. <laughs> in short, I think this means that the bonuses will only apply to divisions that have maintained their composition when fully stocked. So keeping your division stocked means you keep the bonuses that they retain. As a bonus note, I will say the army experience is now green. Just, just something to, to look there. Green army experience. So as we push deeper into the complexity and chaos that is understanding the statistics of Hoi 4 land combat, we reach combat width, which will undoubtedly divide many opinion in comment sections. In a hope to destroy the familiarity of the 40-20 width meta we all know and love, going forward combat width will be determined by the individual province terrain, and this varies from every single province in the game. 
So, drifting away from the 80, which was the standard for every province, province widths can now vary from 75 to 96 as the minimum and the maximum. The new average base for combat width is going to be 90 instead of 80, with planes taking that familiarity. The minimum is going to be mountains, which have a very small combat width of 75, that's 5 down from the previous one, and the new maximum is going to be found in urban provinces in the deep cities, which have 96, which is 16 up from 80. In addition, combat reinforcement is also getting a slight tweak in that people who try to attack mountains, marshes and urban provinces will not have the same reinforcement width of a half that they used to have of the combat width. Instead, it will be a third. So previously, every time you opened up a new front against a tile, you'd gain an additional 40 combat width to the original 80. That was a half of 80. Now, on these specific tiles, mountain, marshes and urban, you'll only get a third. So surrounding a city or a mountain won't be as effective. And it really does seem like these mountain tiles are completely buffed out the wazoo. So what does this mean for the average Hoi 4 combat width builder moving forward? If you're looking for a standard average of combat width, it's very hard to determine, but there are possibly three options that I can think of off the top of my head. The first one is the most straightforward. We were told that the average planes works out at 90 combat width, so divide by 3, each of your divisions should have a combat width of 30. The next is to find the most common denominator between the maximum and the minimum, which I came to as being 24. 96 divides perfectly between 24, with 4 units, and at the minimum of 75, 24 divides by 3, and then you've got 3 extra, but that's not important. If you find a central number that can fit relatively well between all the numbers, I think it comes out to 21.5, so let's say 21 for good measure. So if the average combat width is 21, you can get 3 units in a 75, you can get 4 units in a 90, and you're still decent enough on space in case you want to attack a city. So not too far away from the traditional 20. I think 21 is possibly the most reliable in my mind, but I'm going to have to rely on you, the more intelligent people out there, to determine what the future shall hold. So moving on, the dev diary gives some examples of how the combat width and the reinforcement rate is going to look for individual tiles. And I think it's important to look at this because the majority of Hoi 4's combat takes place in Western Europe and a little bit into Russia. There is, of course, the war in Asia, but let's skip over that for just a second. The tiles that you'll encounter most, I think, in Europe are going to be the plains across Poland, some forests and hills. And these have, generally speaking, very similar combat widths to what it was previously. Hills are identical, for example, forests are only four bigger, just an additional four combat width, and I guess the biggest change is the plains, which have a combat width of 90. As I say, when we were talking earlier about that 21 combat width division, that's like possibly something you could do, but if you thought you were going to be dealing with hills, sticking with the old reliable 20 and 40 widths doesn't seem the most insane thing to do in this instance, but I digress. The final part, talking about combat width, covers how 40 width armour divisions had a disproportionate intake of damage due to how concentrated damage was not punching against their defences correctly. Now, hopefully, the damage will be spread wider over all of the units, meaning they should take more damage and not be so impenetrable as they once were. In addition, there was also some discussion about how overstacking these units would work differently on the map but it wasn't going to be talked about just yet, for, but for a future bag of tricks dev diary in the future. They gave us this teaser of a debug map mode, um, but they don't tell you what it's for. As we can see, the north of the map is very blue, and the south of the map is very red. So, I mean, obviously at first of all, everyone's thinking it's temperature, but if that's the case, why is southern Spain about the same temperature as the southern United Kingdom? In addition, there are parts of the Sahara Desert there that appear to be colder than southern parts of Australia. In truth, I'm not sure. <laughs> I really can't tell you for certain what this is a map of. Right, are you still with us? 
Are you still hanging in there with the technicality? Well, don't worry, we're going to pierce that brain a bit further by talking about armour and piercing. So the changes coming to armour and piercing aren't going to be that complicated, but they're certainly going to be an upgrade from the binary system that came before. Effectively, the point was, if your armour number was bigger than the piercing number, then your armour would hold out. In total, that meant that if your piercing wasn't even touching the armour, there was no point even trying to battle that, because the piercing just needs to be bigger. If your piercing isn't bigger, you weren't going to win. It, it's, it's that simple. That is the binary flaw of the previous armour and piercing. Moving forward, there's going to be a more gradual system. So that means if the numbers between the piercing and the armour are more close, there's going to be a slight reduction instead of a complete blanket reduction. So in the example they give, a panzer division with an armour of 52 and an infantry unit with a piercing of 60 would previously mean that the panzer division would be taking the maximum amount of damage due to their low number. But now, because the numbers are much closer together within a 60-45 bracket margin, that means that previously it was under 50, but now you have a 75% margin of error, you get a only 25% reduction of damage. TLDR, it's not just a game of who has the bigger number, but who has a significantly bigger number so that people aren't cast away by losing just a few points of armour. And so the final part of our technical dev diary talks about reliability. And reliability was sort of one of those key points for those tanks crossing into Russia, wasn't it? Well, I think things are going to get a little bit worse. So, coming with the Barbarossa update, the importance of reliability has increased substantially, because now it not only affects the amount of losses you gain from attrition, but also the amount of organisation you regain when moving from one province to another, specifically those that have bad weather, potentially in Russia, potentially in winter. It also has a scaling effect, which means if it's very low reliability in very bad weather, those effects are multiplied against each other, meaning the losses will be like extreme levels of bad. You're, you will have no tank equipment, you will have no manpower, you will be suffering. On the flip side, there is some hope, because if you do have good reliability, it does give a, I don't want to say trickle back, but a supposed, uh, a supposed amount of return on the amount of tanks you receive due to the reliable constructions under such attrition. They describe it as capturing enemy equipment, but in reverse. In total, this basically is just a massive hit down on this massive push for reliability going to be the key point for attacking cold provinces and something to keep an eye on, especially as we can see in this image here where reliability is doing massive debuffs. One debuff is just the flat debuff to reliability. There's also one for moving, which has the reliability debuff stuck on it, and one for weather, which is deep snow. So yeah, massive debuffs for recovery for organization. And since organization is like the lifeblood of every battle, this is not looking good for what fighting. The final note of the dev diary is completely irrelevant, but does talk about how the Hoi 4 development is under a new Paradox division branch called Studio Gold. As far as I can see, Paradox have gone away from concentrated industry and have moved to dispersed industry. So good luck to them with that, and I hope the development of Victoria Free is going well. That's all for this time. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope it wasn't too over complex. I hope I didn't babble too much. Um, if you've enjoyed, Feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!